Linda Burney, welcome to the program. Merry Christmas, Dave. And to you, and to you. Look, there's plenty of detail out there about how the voice could work in the co-design final report from Professors Marcia Langton and Tom Karma produced in the last Parliament. What we don't yet know is whether this is the model you would put to Parliament. Can you clarify that for us this morning? Uh, the, the voice is being informed by two very important First Nations groups. There's the working group, which includes Tom Kalmer and Marcia Langton. Uh, it includes people like Megan Davis, Pat Anderson and Noel Pearson, who, ha who were the original architects of the Uluru Statement. It includes people like Thomas Mayer. Uh, there is also the engagement group, which is about 60 First Nations people. That is extraordinarily, very, very representative. Uh, they are informing the government as we go along. We are being very deliberate and being very careful and listening to all the voices. The report, the Kalma Langton report, is absolutely fundamental, obviously, to what will be the final design of the voice. It's not the only report, uh, but this is not something that's come out of nowhere. This has been talked about for generations. Mm with First Nations people. So when you say that report from last year is absolutely fundamental, are your words, are we, are we to take from that that this is basically uh, the model that you will go forward with? No, what you can take from that is that there is a working group that will inform the government on the final design, uh, or at least what the government will take to the parliament remembering, and everyone's forgotten this, mm. it is the parliament that will decide finally sure. what the, des the design will be. Uh, there is some very well ventilated principles uh, that have been agreed to that will inform the design of the voice. Things like it will be representative, mm. things like it will be accountable and transparent. It well, will have gender parity, it will represent Torres Strait Islanders, it will have young people, um, and most importantly, it will be a representative body chosen by Aboriginal communities mm. and not usurp existing organisations. Let's go to some of those, those principles then as a starting point. Um, that co-design report recommended essentially a voice in two parts, uh, local and regional voices and a national voice. Is that basically the approach that you're taking? Uh, the approach, as I said, will be informed by the working group in particular. But will there be we local and regional voices? We are not going to get voices? ahead of the working group. Okay. Um, I have been involved in Aboriginal affairs for over 40 years. And I know the importance of consultation. I know the importance of listening to people. And at the end of the day, David, this referendum is not about what politicians uh, do or don't do. It's about what the Australian people believe in. And I have faith in the Australian people. No, I appreciate that, but the government will be the one that puts to parliament the, the model. Uh, going back to that report, the Marcia Langton, Tom Karma report, I mean, half their report is on the local and regional voices. This is fundamental to their proposed model. So just to clarify, will there be local and regional voices as well as a national voice? Uh, there is enormous amounts of work going on at state and territory levels, which have to be, which has to be part of uh, where we head nationally. Mm. I see what's going on in, for example, uh, legislation about to go into the South Australian Parliament to create a voice there. There's a First Nation, Nations Assembly uh, in Victoria. Those things will inform and I think enhance a national voice. What this national voice is about, it's very straightforward. Mm. It is about improving the lives and the outcomes, which are completely unacceptable at the moment of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. But it will also be about uh, telling the truth in our, in our nation's birth certificate and recognising that this country has the extraordinary gift of 65,000 years. The, um, let's turn to what the, the voice will actually do and, and what it won't do. The Prime Minister in his Gama speech yes. uh, suggested that the voice would make representations on, quote, matters relating to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Are there any matters that don't 
relate to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples? I think the important focus there is what the Prime Minister has said and what I've also said. Uh, this voice is about improving the life outcomes for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. It doesn't matter what mm. you choose, whether it's housing, whether it's incarceration, whether it's educational outcomes, whether it's domestic violence rates, all of those things will be informed by this voice, including, importantly, uh, cultural issues, uh, the, the fact that there's going to be uh, a move towards a standalone Cultural Heritage Act, uh, things like a standalone domestic violence uh, strategy for Aboriginal people. Hmm. These are the things that the voice will absolutely inform. And in terms of transparency around that, the co-design report suggested that um, all formal advice provided by the voice uh, be tabled in Parliament, uh, and that there'd be a statement on all bills before Parliament explaining whether the, vo the voice was actually consulted, what advice was provided. Is that how you see it working? The way that I see it working is uh, very clear in the principles. Mm. Uh, what I didn't finish saying there is that it will not have a veto right no. of the Parliament and the it is advisory um, and it will also not have a program delivery functions. I think those things are really important to make sure that the voice is available to the parliament and to the executive government for advice and that advice can be sought and given. But will every bill before parliament include a statement that says the voice was consulted or wasn't consulted? Uh, the, those sorts of things need to be uh, fully ventilated with think? the working party. What's your view? Uh, but as my minister? view is that uh, issues that affect First Nations people, uh, the logical thing is that the voice would be consulted about that. There is no question, David, that what we've been doing uh, is not working. There is still overcrowding. Uh, there are still communities in this country that don't have clean water. Uh, there are communities that don't have connectivity. Those issues are very important. We and there is an absolute commitment from the government to establishing this voice and making sure that the, that the notion of self-determination, the principle of self-determination guides us in what we do. Just on that, I mean, the, the closing the gap um, results that we saw, the annual results during the week, lay bare uh, the, the failure uh, to date of, of tackling these problems. But the Nationals' concern is, well, what's the voice going to do to close the gap? Can you give us a practical example of how the voice will help close the gap? Well, let's take, for example, the fact that uh, there is going to be a, sta <coughs> pardon me, a standalone First Nations uh, domestic violence plan. It would be important to me that the voice is very much involved in advising, uh, working alongside the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Advisory Committee on that, uh, to make sure that what is in that plan reflects what First Nations people are saying about the issue of domestic violence, for example. Let's take another example. Uh, let's think about for the fact that we're going to be moving towards a standalone um, First Nations or Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultural heritage plan. Fundamental issues of that would be advised by the voice, alongside with the alliance of First Nations people and cultural heritage. There is no doubt mm. that what happened at Jukin cannot happen again. On the question of detail, you mentioned the working group and the engagement group that are doing their work. When will we see that finalised and the gov government present the sort of model that it would legislate? Let me very, be very clear about this. I am not going to get ahead and the government will not get ahead of the working group. But will it be before, I the, some before of those the referendum? Ex extremely important um, and significant people mm. involved in the working group. I have been around this space for a very long time and I know what's needed, I know what's, what works and I've got the amazing support of the Prime Minister 
and the caucus on this. And that, to me, is very, very important. I just want to be clear, though, will this be presented before the referendum or not? Uh, when people go into that ballot box uh, to have their say on the referendum, they will be well informed and they will well understand the reason for the voice, as I said, to improve the life mm. outcomes for First Nations people, but also issues around how it will work. Um, and, uh, and importantly, what it will mean in uniting this country. The, the voice, the notion is not just about Aboriginal people, it's about us as a nation finally having in our constitution recognition of something that no other country in this, on this blue planet has. Well, just on that, and finally, you spoke in Parliament this week uh, about your own upbringing. Mm. A small town in the Riverina, you didn't have much. Uh, you didn't meet your father until you were 27. Why did you want to tell that personal story, uh, Linda Burney, and was this in response in part to the, the personal attacks on you from Jacinta Knapp and Jim Price? I don't worry about personal attacks, quite frankly, and uh, I suspect that uh, there will be more to come. What's important to me is that there be a voice that I believe in that will improve the life outcomes for First Nations people in this country. And what's important to me, and I have had so... There is so much support, David, out there, uh, for the voice, both in the business community, um, in in the broader community, uh, in in the churches, in the uh, Federation of Ethnic Communities Council. What's important to me is that this voice uh, is about representing First Nations people to the parliament, to the executive government, for better outcomes and bringing this country together in an extraordinary moment of truth-telling. And are you confident 12 months from now, despite uh, a, a bit of an ugly tone to the debate over the last week, in 12 months we'll be sitting here and Australians will have voted yes? I am confident in the Australian people and I believe if uh, the Australian people uh, fully understand the need for this voice, uh, the powerlessness, as described in the Uluru Statement, of First Nations people, and an enormous sense of fairness, I believe the vote will be yes. Well, Linda Burney, thank you very much for joining us on this final show and have a great Christmas. Have a great Christmas to you and everyone watching and we're very proud of the Socceroos. <laughs> Indeed we are, well said.